So I'm back on the chimney breast antics. So a couple of weeks ago, I caught a cold just after I showed you me bricking this up and I've been very, very poorly. You can actually probably hear it, but I'm ready now to continue working on it. So in that time, I've been doing hours, if not days of research of what is compliant. What can I actually put on side and inside this chimney breast? So that meant me joining quite a few log burner Facebook groups full of heaters installers, trying to give advice, and so many people disagreed with each other about whether I could put plasterboard or even fire rated plasterboard on the chimney breast. Definitely none of that inside. Whether I should just put cement board all over, sand, cement, and render it. Anyway, it got really confusing and I want to try and DIY as much as I can. So in the end, I spoke to the buyer company, the heaters installer slash builder that work with them, and I even spoke to heaters themselves. It was, it was chaos. But as far as they were aware, as long as it's A1 non-combustible cement board, I should be fine. And I've got quite a clearance around here anyway, because my opening is 900 by 900 millimeters, and the fire isn't that big. So, Behind you, I've ordered loads of cement board. Now, yes, this is gonna be the more expensive way around it because I don't trust myself rendering that chimney to get a perfect finish because I'm going to be tiling it. That's what we've decided. We went to a tile showroom nearby and we were very impressed by this feature where we could have a tile here, a contrasting one here, and then it matches on the back. And as soon as you come into this room, it should be a really powerful statement but i don't put tiles straight onto this in case it doesn't look good so that's why i've gone for 12 millimeter of the cement board almost throughout but i've got four sheets of the six millimeter over there it's not as rigid but i'm going to put it on this back here and the reason for that a few weeks ago do you remember when i said we were going to dot and dab this and then it dawned on me after we bought it we've got to try and get a smooth finish in line with the existing plaster here so that's why i'm going to go for six mil so i've got to be a bit careful with that because it's more brittle than the other stuff but to fix the cement board on i've read that i need some cement based towel adhesive i need to make sure i'm using a fire safe one inside here and so much above the actual fire but because i need a reasonably flat surface in the first place to work with yesterday i went through the whole thing and just chipped off any mortar snot so nothing was protruding and then i gave the whole thing a coat of sbr and that is why you can see it's quite shiny it's a, a paintable rubber so hopefully that's killed any of the dust and the suction and by the time i come to put my tile adhesive on there it won't dry out as quickly and i also need to use some mechanical fixings so my plan is to hopefully use some masonry concrete screws and those look like this, and I don't need any raw plugs for that. And I need at least 50 millimeters to go into the brickwork. So I'm using 62. So I've got my first board down there ready to cut, but I'm gonna be starting in here first because we need the internal measurements sooner rather than later. So I can call back the stove company for the measurements for the hearth. And this little monkey can't wait for his fire. I keep finding him laying in here. Okay, I have been pinching his dog bed. He's very old dog bed, just as a kneeling pad. We'll upgrade that very soon. Right, this is all dry, and I've decided I'm gonna cut the cement board with the score and snap hardy back at all. In here, I'm not using any power tools in here because it gets dusty, and the dust from this can be dangerous. And that's why I've put it on this plastic sheet, because any dust it catches, I can just pick this up and throw it away. I don't even want to be sweeping any stuff in here. Uh, and I need a tape measure. Tape measure. So the first thing I want to cut for is this back here. And I'll tell you why it was a mistake starting at the back in a minute. And I know the board's coming 1200 by 800 millimeters. And that means I'm going to have a daft little eight centimeters piece. So to avoid that, I'm just going to cut one down to the width of this and have another piece going above here so it's not so small. So because the opening is 900 and it's out a little bit with mortar here and there, I've decided to cut it down to 88. So then I've got a nice even amount of a gap because it's all going to get covered by the time I've put my next boards in. 
I don't want to be fighting trying to get that in. I have heard these 12 millimeter boards can be a bit of a nightmare to cut. So I'm going to go over it with a few passes with the tool that you can buy for it. And then I'm going to have a go snapping. This is my first attempt. People have said online it gives a better cut than a Stanley knife. We'll see. I might have to use a Stanley knife. It feels all right. It feels a little bit tapered over there though. I've read somewhere like you need eight passes. Let's have a go. I've scored it quite a bit. <laughs> oh my word. So I've reached for my hammer. No, no, it's not done enough. Back to the scoring board I was for a few more passes, but soon it became apparent this method was the biggest time waster with 12 millimeter boards, despite watching one of their instructional videos. Let's see if we can get this second time round. Come on. <laughs> so let's have another go. Oh, come. Got silly that didn't it? Heavy. So it'll be around there. So now I've got that in, I may as well continue doing a bit of dry lay, doing all my other awkward cuts before I start mixing any adhesive and then it will be a race against time. So my next cut, I did everything I could to avoid using power tools. I tried my tough built folding knife. That wasn't much better. I finally found my Stanley knife with new blade. Again, it didn't do a lot. So I took it outside knowing things were about to get dusty and ready to say goodbye to some old blades using my jigsaw, an old hand saw. But my absolute favorite from this point forward was using my works compact saw. Although I highly recommend using a diamond disc cutting blade where possible, I'd already had a fair amount of use out of this, so I was happy to sacrifice it on cutting these. It gave a much cleaner cut than the score and snap knife. So I've just faced my first hurdle. I realised that when I put the two backboards in, I was struggling to measure the sides of how deep they needed to be, because obviously I want them flush with the front of the chimney, and then I can put another return piece on there. And I thought, well, yeah, there's going to be some adhesive behind here knock roughly six mil off for that and i thought why am i struggling like this so what i've done is i've taken this away i will have to trim this down shortly again but at least i found my favorite cutting method now so instead i've been measuring the sides so so then once those two are done i can just fit the other one to the back it doesn't matter how much adhesive is on there so i've cut a little bit out for here it's just a little bit tight in this corner where the mortar is, so I'm gonna to have to just cut a little bit off there. After trimming a bit off, I offer it back to the opening to find the concrete floor at the front was also preventing it from being plumb. Ah, that's better. So much better. And I can get that in line with that, that's fantastic. I'm all right with that. So I need to now repeat for the other side, trim the back one down a little bit more and we can stick that in very soon. So after quite a lot of tinkering to get it right in here, I feel like I've now honed my favourite cutting technique. And this was always going to be the most difficult part in my opinion before I start packing up stuff on here. Anyway, definitely start with the sides first and then cut something down for the back to slot in between. Anyway, before I start crazily whipping up some tile adhesive and then going for gold, I am going to make my life a little bit easier first by doing all of my pre-drilling into the masonry first. I'll have to number some of these or mark which way goes up. Take them away, put the adhesive on and then put them on with my screws. So, I just want to show you something quickly. You can buy some washers for these and I did buy some proper ones, although the hole is too small. Yes, I could pre-drill them to be bigger. Then I thought I'd buy some on Amazon. Well, I've already done a little test. 
into some wood and it warped. So I really don't want to be messing about with that and I don't really want to be drilling holes to be bigger, it'd take too long. So I decided to do a little test here with a scrap and a masonry concrete screw and that is not going anywhere and it countersinks nicely. That's the real test. I wanted to see how it countersunk in there, whether it would crack the board. But while it countersunk while gripping into masonry behind was another matter. Just to clarify, when I drill holes for the screws, I'm not putting the screws in first. I'm only putting the screws in at the end because I don't want to create a weakness. Because what I've found in the past is you only have one chance with these. Now it's recommended for a full 1200 by 800 board, I need nine screws in. But with these smaller bits, I'm just gonna have to do it by eye or whatever. I also had them packed up off the floor and walls of a minimum of three millimeter for expansion. So now I've drilled all the holes that I need for these, I've taken them away for now, and I've actually swept over any of the brick dust, because obviously I've sealed all of this. So now I need to mix my tile adhesive with a paddle, and I'm gonna be using this that I bought from Topps Tiles the other week, called Heat Resist by Palace, the professional's choice. It just says for stoves and log burners. And there's two five kilogram bags in here. Each five kilogram needs to be mixed with 1.25 litres of cold, clean water. I'm just gonna mix one bag at a time, and I'll just try and use all of the stuff up as I can with any big boards above. And I've actually got some wooden props to prop up any just above the opening. I add the powder into the bucket of water, not the other way around, so that when I come to mix it, I'm more likely to avoid any lumps and achieve a smoother consistency. I also have a bucket of water at standby to keep my paddle clean and add a splash of water to the adhesive if I think it's a bit too stiff. So the instructions say I've got to use a six millimetre notch trowel for this, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm starting on this side. I'm also making sure my six millimeter notches are running in the same direction for a more consistent coverage and hopefully for a stronger bond before offering my first board once fully covered. And I do my best to try and get the boards plumb and square to the wall, although this wasn't always possible, depending how much the screws nipped it in. So I'll have to build up some areas later during the tiling process. I also found the screw heads weren't countersinking as much as I'd like. So although not enough to worry once the tile adhesive is on, I later sacrificed a countersink bit for the rest of the boards, but this wasn't really necessary for the six millimeter boards. Now I could repeat the same process for the back, which I had to mount in two sections. <sighs> and any gaps I filled with a fire rated mastic and smoothed over with a wet finger or cleaning wipe. Or the manual says you could use fire cement instead. I'd run out of my first batch of the five kilogram fire adhesive at this stage, so I wanted to do some planning and pre-drilling before mounting the next lot. So I temporarily propped up the front boards, which were the same height as the lintel, so I could prop up my next full board <sighs> along with some timber that I'd cut to height. Now, I know Mr. TCD could have helped me, but I do love a good solo challenge. Plus, a few people seem to think that he does most of the work behind the scenes anyway. So, you know, I'm doing it on my own. Um, I'm going to do that, I think. Just don't want to knock that. So, I'm mixing up another batch. I've got all of my pre-drilling sorted out. Now it's gonna again be a race against time because apparently I've got 20 minutes of work time once I've got the tiles on, but it takes three hours to set. So there's still gonna be a bit of panic, especially because I might not have quite enough for the large sheet. After mounting my first full panel, 
I started getting into the habit of temporarily mounting sheets with one or two screws so I could easily do the rest of the drilling before mounting with adhesive and the mechanical fixings. Go right. Oh. So yesterday I got most of the chimney breast done and actually got easy towards the top because I could use some of the off cuts and that is the challenge is lifting it up in the air and I had to prop this one up, this was the hardest one to prop it up on some pieces of timber but anyway what I've done now is I've got some cuts ready to finish off well, I've got one for up there, two for the sides here but I don't really need a massive amount of tile adhesive for that and I have run out of a sealed bag of the heat resist stuff so for those because they're not that close to the fire I'm just going to use some MAPE floor and wall cement adhesive and I've also marked a big board for the back wall just in case I've got too much adhesive and I don't want it to go off and then I'll continue making some more for that but the last bit I'll be doing is this the 12 millimeter ones and I've definitely got enough thank goodness so hopefully I'll be done shortly but yeah the hardest part is drilling and screwing them particularly up in the air my arm is killing and these concrete screws on my breeze box are a bit temperamental so some of them away from the fire zone i've just put some raw plugs in and screws i tried one here the screw head snapped so i had to move one there and i decided to try the washer here to see what it was like i don't think it's needed to be honest it worked it worked and it didn't warp but anyway i'm going to crack on with this so it's going to be all go from now on race against time on the adhesive Now I could work on mounting the 6mm stuff and I wasn't sure whether this would be good enough as it really doesn't feel as solid and there's quite a few dints in my breeze box after being a bit too heavy handed with my SDS hammer drill so I took extra care to avoid these areas while drilling and mounting but I have to say mounting these was bliss. They're so much lighter to work with, gave a lovely flat finish and countersinking first wasn't as vital. Although the negative is I know that they can easily break because I bought three half price ones that were damaged from top styles. Right, my next full one I need to cut a little bit and it's got some damage on it because I got it cheap. I'm going to it's that side. Yeah. Oh, that's the side it's got damage on. Huh. So I'm going to rest it next to the next one on some packers. So now I need to mark on the back of it where this brick Ends, and I don't want it to stick out too much because I've got another board to go on top of here so I'd rather have a little bit of a clearance and um, this one will try the score and snap thing because it's only six mil. I gave it about three passes and that's all it seemed to need. It was so much easier. I even go as far as saying this was very therapeutic to use. That's much better. So I've just cut my last panel and I haven't adhesive the rest of them. All I've done is just drill the hole, put a screw in just to free my hands. But if you come around here, this is what it's looking like. The bottom two are stuck on, but these I've just put the old screw in temporarily. That might cause a problem later. I might actually have to put a roll plug in those ones. But anyway, it just helped me. So yeah, for this, I've just had to measure up and cut with my circular saw and my blade is pretty much dead now. So yeah, I uh, should have got a carbide tip type of diamond blade, but I just used an old one that I had. Also, if you remember, we were gonna dot and dab with 12 millimeter plasterboard on here, and I realized that this wouldn't have been flush with the existing plaster. This is six mil, and there is a metal bracket here 
and it's perfect. So by the time we put towels on there and put a tile trim on, it should look right and intentional. So the boards have been up now for a couple of days and now I've decided instead of using Matic I'm going to fill the joints with fire cement for a more rigid approach because I was worried about the Matic not being the best idea for when my tiles are on there. Whether it needs a bit of flexibility, I don't know, let me know. I've found, again, conflicting things online. But now I just need to go tile shopping once this is dried. We will be using porcelain, not ceramic, because we've been told by several tile companies that's what you need around a log burner. We did consider using brick slips, but when I worked out the standard brick slip is about 215 millimeters long, I noticed that I wouldn't have been able to get a seamless look throughout, and I want this to look genuine if I do apply something like that. Again, considered stone cladding, but now we've gone through all this trouble, I think just putting stone cladding on top of this would have been a waste of money. Plus, I love a tiling project. Anyway, we're not only getting ready for a stove, the next thing we need to sort of get ready for is flooring. And that involves us cutting down the brickwork here with the stone cutter, but also measure up the window behind you because we want to get some French doors here. So yeah, there's still a lot to do and we need to replace this old thing because it's dated and it doesn't open properly. It's a bit stiff. Anyway, stay tuned for those upcoming projects if that's what you fancy. Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.